Some objects are nearly impossible to 3D scan. Thin, transparent, layered, shiny, or hairy surfaces. Traditional photogrammetry just doesn't cut it. But with Kiri Engine, the sponsor of this video, we might finally have a solution. Let's dive into this groundbreaking technology and see if it lives up to the hype. I've worked with Kiri Engine in the past and explored all their 3D scanning features extensively from photogrammetry, featureless scanning, and even the early version of 3D Gaussian splatting. If you're curious about how these technologies work in detail, I'll link that video in the description for you to check out. Now, if you're not familiar with 3D Gaussian splatting, it's a revolutionary 3D scanning method that works fundamentally different from photogrammetry. Instead of building a mesh of polygons to represent geometry, 3DGS creates a volumetric representation of a scene using dense overlapping points or splats. These splats store information like color, position, and density, acting like tiny glowing particles that collectively paint a vivid 3D representation of an object, unlike photogrammetry which constructs a rigid geometric shell. The strength of splats lies in how they handle depth and detail. Unlike photogrammetry which often struggles with thin, transparent, or reflective surfaces, Gaussian splats excel at capturing these challenging features. This is because they don't rely on rigid surface geometry, focusing instead on the visual and spatial essence of the object. Of course, there is a trade-off, splats don't inherently contain mesh information which makes them less practical for workflows like game development, 3D printing, or traditional modeling. This is where Kiri Engine's latest update, version 3.12, changes everything. They've introduced advanced algorithms to automatically remove objects from the background, simplifying the scanning process, and also a cutting-edge system for converting Gaussian splats into clean, usable meshes. This new conversion algorithm predicts the surface normals and removes the reflections with incredible accuracy, solving one of the biggest challenges of 3D scanning. On top of that, Kiri Engine has also released two amazing Blender add-ons for 3DGS files. These tools make it easier to import, refine, and even animate 3DGS files for VFX and motion graphics, which I'll cover at the end of the video. Let's take a closer look now. The plan is simple. I'll scan each one of these tricky objects using the 3DGS mode in Curie Engine. To simulate a broad use case scenario, I'll be recording directly within the app. However, if you have more time and access to better equipment, you might just want to use an external camera or even your phone's native app. Just make sure it lets you log the exposure and shoot at the highest resolution possible. Remember that you can record up to 3 minutes of footage and the file size needs to stay under 2 gigabytes. To make this a fair comparison, I'll also create a photo scan of each object under the same lighting conditions. For photo scans, I'll take 45 to 100 images from all angles with good overlap between each shot. This rule of thumb applies to 3DGS as well when scanning a single object, it ensures you get consistent results. Once your recording is complete, Kiri Engine will guide you to the upload menu. Here, you can enable two critical toggles, 3DGS to mesh, which processes a mesh alongside the 3D Gaussian splats, and remove background, which automatically masks your object from the background. If you're unsure about these settings or you just want to experiment, consider recording outside the app. This way you can upload the raw footage multiple times with different settings to compare the results. For this test, I'll turn booth toggles on to gauge the app's limits. When you're ready, just hit the upload button. Your scan will first be queued and then processed on their servers. Meanwhile, you can start creating and uploading additional scans simultaneously. For the photo scans, I'll enable auto object masking, set the maximum polygon count and texture resolution to get the highest quality. Now that we've captured our scans, let's see how they compare. Starting with the transparent Ganesha statue, photogrammetry predictably struggled. Transparent objects confuse it since it can't process how light passes through. In contrast, the 3DGS scan captured the shape remarkably well, and the 3DGS to mesh conversion delivered a highly usable result with just a small hole in the back. The microphone posed another challenge for photogrammetry, failing to reconstruct the back despite careful capture. 3DGS performed much better, preserving the shape. While the splats result in blurry textures, the converted mesh version showed significant an improvement, making it a practical option. The glass bottle, both transparent and layered, completely stumped photogrammetry. Yet, 3DGS excelled, even capturing the roots inside the bottle. The converted mesh version retained impressive detail despite the object's complexity. The brush yielded an arguably decent photo scan result, likely due to the bristles acting as feature points. However, the 3DGS scan fell short here, with softer bristles and some noticeable holes that carried over to the mesh as well. Lastly, the flower vase highlighted photogrammetry's usual flaws, detached meshes, and uneven surfaces. 3DGS handled the thin and complex geometry far better, though the mesh converted 
version showed room for improvement. It's clear that 3DGS is pushing boundaries, even with challenging objects like these. In conclusion, 3D Gaussian splitting proves to be a powerful alternative to traditional photogrammetry, excelling in scenarios where photogrammetry struggles, such as with transparent, reflective, or layered objects. The updates in Kiri Engine, particularly the 3DGS to mesh conversion and the background removal, significantly enhance the usability of this technology, making it a practical option for complex scans. While photogrammetry still holds its ground for diffuse, feature-rich objects, 3DGS is clearly pushing boundaries and opening up new possibilities for 3D scanning workflows. What's even more exciting is that Kiri Engine is the first app to bring 3D Gaussian splatting to our hands, making this tech accessible to everyone. This experiment has proven that as long as you have your phone with you, you don't need any fancy gear or expensive setups to achieve impressive results. The ability to scan complex objects directly from a mobile device, process them into usable meshes right then and there, and seamlessly integrate them into workflows later is a game changer for artists and creators. For my lovely viewers who have made it this far into the video, I've got some bonus content for you. I originally planned something way cooler with this review, custom really music, voiceover, the whole package, starts. but That's ran into question. some time limitations. I'll finish it eventually and I'll be posting the progress on my Patreon page, but for now, let me show you some behind the scenes stuff. So this is me, or rather my 3D duplicate, in a poorly lit room, illuminated only by dim ambient lights and my monitor as the key light. Despite these conditions, the scan turned out surprisingly well. I even experimented with different techniques, staying in the center of the room while scanning, focusing on one object at a time, and slowly shifting between them. Funny enough, the very first scan using the simple keep the subject in the center method turned out to be the best of all in this case. There's this 3DGS render blender add-on by Kiri Engine, and I'm not getting paid to say this, but it's hands down the best add-on right now for working with Gaussian splats that's publicly available. It gives you full control over the splats, letting you edit them, edit the shading, animate them, and even do fun things like punching a hole in my face. And yes, it's capable of much more than that. If you're into animation, you'll want to pair it with another add-on called Point Animate. It's a fantastic tool for creating effects like dissolving, morphing, and more. The developers even have a dedicated YouTube channel with tutorials, so I'll link their channel and the Blender Market page in the description. Naturally, I had to see how our scanned objects would look in Blender. With the 3DGS render add-on, importing the scans is super streamlined. All you need is a PLY file, just hit import PLY as splats and you're ready to go. You can view them directly in the rendered mode. The splats are made up of individual planes that you can edit in the edit mode or through the add-ons tools. One quick tip, when you first import the splats, they won't automatically face the camera. To fix this, select enable camera updates from the drop-down and then hit update all to view whenever you move your viewport. For real-time updates, you can enable start camera update, though it will slow down your performance by quite a bit. And now for the best part. I saved this one for last. Remember the first shot of this video? Turns out, I made a 3DGS scan of the entire table setup and it looks phenomenal. It managed to capture everything with incredible accuracy, even the caustics from the bottle. When I brought it into Blender, I was able to explore creative angles and use it as a virtual set for shooting videos. This just scratches the surface of what's possible. Even if you decide that it's not good enough for direct applications yet, it's still a giant leap in the right direction. And there are already so many creative ways to use it. If this excites you, Download Kiri Engine and try it out. It's completely free to get started. Keep in mind that the 3DGS features are part of the Pro plan, but their pricing is super competitive compared to other 3D scanning apps. I'm genuinely excited to see what you guys create, so if you post something cool, tag me on Instagram at renderites. I would love to check it out. And one last thing. Did you know that you can relight your 3D Gaussian splats directly in Blender? If you're ready to dive into lighting but you're short on time, check out my quick 6 minute video on mastering lighting in Blender and learn everything from the tools and concepts to cinematic applications. Wishing you all a very happy new year and I'll hopefully see you in this video next.